Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extension tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how you can run any command line operation in any Adobe app through your extension. This is going to be using the fs child process spawn cmd command and using our extension testing code we're going to create this uh, setup which basically allows us to run whatever line of code we choose. We're also going to spit out whatever it gives us uh, once it's done. You can see here we're just spitting out the text we provide. We're going to say echo command line uh, instruction. And then we're also going to get these pushed out through JavaScript alerts. The basic idea here is we're going to use a NodeFS child process uh, module to basically spawn a command prompt. Um, and then through that, we can also check when we get something outputted from it. We can check when we have an error and we can check when the execution is complete. Um, all the while sending whatever command we want in the main area here. This is going to allow you to send straight up command line arguments and strings and things like that, or you can even execute executables, Python scripts, or whatever you like. The point of today is to show you that no matter what application you're using, and if you're using an extension, you have the ability to actually basically run a call system command as you would normally in After Effects, but with much more control and all within JS and not JSX. So ideally when you run the script again, we're gonna get several alerts. We're gonna get some STD out or whatever is pushed out from our command if it has a return. We're also gonna get um, a JSX version of the alert to make sure that we get everything visible. And when it's done running the exe or running whatever the command line is, we're going to get some text that says done with process. And all this will allow us to chain things if necessary. For example, if you have a workflow with multiple exes or anything like that. So before we get started, make sure you check out all the links down below to GitHub to check out this extension testing code. Uh, follow us on YouTube, like the video, subscribe, all the usual stuff to support us and check out stuff we make. But other than that, we're going to jump straight into this tutorial. And I'm going to start off by just starting up from scratch here. So I have a bunch of other functions built in here that I'm messing around with to see what I can do manually to decode uh, encoded JS. But we're going to basically set up our own custom function here. And we're going to start by including a const called terminal. Um, now this is going to be equal to uh, require. We're going to require the Node.js uh, built-in module called child, child Process. And you could stop here and just have access to that. But what we're going to want to do is spawn CMD. And what this is basically going to do is access the child process um, module inside of Node.js, which is super useful for running files and having access to all of that. And then we're going to also spawn command prompt. And looking through the Node.js documentation through here, we can find dot spawn. So with dot spawn, basically with our child process, if we do some basic Googling, we can see that it allows us to execute basic um, command line options. In this case, you can spawn command exe, and that's obviously going to work if you're on Windows. But let's go ahead and see if we can spawn the Mac side of things, also known as terminal. Um, so if we scroll down here, you can see we have quite a bit of things to look through. If we just type in dot spawn, you can see we get a command we're starting here. What is the command? We need to find where exactly we're defining this here. It looks like you can use shell, set to true, possibly, or bash. And these are just a few of the options. I I haven't messed around too much uh, on the Mac side of things with this yet, but this should still allow you to run uh, terminal commands the same way you would a CMD command. Uh, just make sure you try uh, the path to your script, whether that's a SH file, you can use bash, and I believe there's a whole bunch of other formats on Mac you can use as well. But for the purposes of this, we're going to spawn a CMD uh, terminal. And now we're going to use this terminal variable to figure out how exactly we can run some code and then as well how we can get the response from that. So when the code is done executing, we can have something run synchronously afterwards. And we can also have uh, an output for the error or the output if it spits something out into the uh, command line or terminal. I'm gonna use the actual documentation here for reference. 
you can see they do things slightly differently. They're enclosing their variable with the require in uh, brackets here. They're also using node colon child process. For our purposes, I don't believe we need this. Um, this may just be for the web side of things, but the one built into uh, extensions here seems to work just fine doing this. But what we do want are these juicy bits here. So we can go ahead and copy and paste this just straight from the website. Uh, you can see here we have console logs. We don't really have support much support for that uh, regarding extensions. So I'm going to change these to alerts. And then we're just going to change all the text on the ls.std out. std out is just a way of saying uh, the output of something. So we'll say output is equal to data. And we'll say dot to string just to make sure it's stringified. And then if we get an error, we're going to say error is equal to data dot to string. And then here we have ls dot on close. This is what's going to happen when it, the process has closed or exited. We're just going to say uh, alert closed. And I'm also going to add this code variable just to see what it gives us. Now, in this case, we need to change this ls variable because in this case, this actually looks like it might be running a Mac command. Again, I'm not like the hugest Mac head. I'll, I'm getting there slowly, but we're going to use the terminal variable for our std out terminal.std error and terminal.onclose should provide that information here. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we get any results. It is in sort of the global space, so it should run first thing when we run the extension. As you can see, we get output equals Microsoft Windows version 10, blah, 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 blah. You can see we have some text here below After Effects 2023 support files, and that's all we get. So one thing I like to do when we have a JS alert that has too much information and we can't see it all like this, what I like to do is do a JavaScript extended alert. So I can say var CS interface is equal to a new CS interface. And then I'm going to say CS interface dot eval script. We're going to create a function in JSX called alert JSX. And this is just going to be a way that we can alert stuff easily. So I have a function here called alert JSX. All it takes is a string. We're going to alert that string. The reason we do this versus like a JavaScript alert like here is because this is going to cut stuff off in JSX. though, it's not going to cut stuff off. So I will break out of here and we're going to add json.stringify. We're going to pass in the string as the argument that we want to alert. Let's alert the data that we're getting inside our std out function. So we should get two alerts uh, or two different alerts. You can see here we get object and then all of this stuff again. So here it's coming into our JSX as an object. For this purpose, we'll go ahead and just say s or json.stringify s and we'll relaunch. And here we go. We have looks like it's giving us buffer data. This may not be something useful that we actually want, um, but this is what is coming from our uh, std out alert. And what are we doing, though, to actually get this command? We're not actually executing anything yet, because remember, we have this on close method, and this is done after our code is done executing. We're never getting to here. And we're never getting to here, only on the terminal.std out. So what we need to do now is actually execute something on the command line. There's some code that we need to add after this. And after it's done executing, then we should be able to get this alert here. All right, so in order to do this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need terminal.std in, standard input. And we're going to say dot write. We're going to write something to our terminal input, basically. And then we're also going to have std in dot end. And that's going to let us know that it's done executing, essentially. And I'm also going to enclose these all in a set timeout. Not always necessary, but in my case, I'm going to set a 500 millisecond delay and wrap the whole thing in that. So now we're going to write something to our terminal or to our command line as you might want to think of it as. And then we're going to end that input afterwards. So it kind of knows, hey, this is done. 
So let's provide some code that's actually going to do something. We're just going to say, well, what we can do is actually launch command prompt ourselves. And what do we want to run? Let's say, I believe if we say open cmd.exe, or is it start? We want to say start cmd.exe just to see if we can get a, a new command prompt or terminal to pop up. So this is the point where you would put in your actual uh, code you type into command line. So in my case, let's try start uh, in here, start cmd.exe. Now this actually isn't going to do enough. If I run this, output equals more question mark. Uh, closed and zero so it does we get to this closed section now, but We're not getting a proper uh, We're not getting a CMD to pop up the reason being is there's this weird thing involved with this where we need to actually end The command with a new line or a character break like this now We get the output We get the CMD to pop up and then once we close the exe, we get to our closed function. So in this case, we're just opening up a command prompt and it doesn't consider it being closed until we physically close the window that pops up. But in other cases, say you're running a Python library that's been converted to exe, for example, using a pi installer. Say for another example, you're using a, another exe or DMG built application or a script file or bash file, an sh file, those are gonna come into your on close function here. And I believe sometimes it's called exit as well you can use. Um, those are gonna come in after that's actually done executing. But because we're simply saying to start an exe, this code doesn't actually end until you close that exe. Generally, these kind of scripts and stuff will close themselves automatically upon completion. But if we're just raw starting a cmd.exe or a terminal or something like that, you're gonna ha have to close it to get to this uh, next function here, which if you wanted, you could send this off to a new function and then run more terminal child processes to just start stacking them. Maybe I want to start CMD, then start after effects.exe. Um, pretty much anything you can type into here is what we can end up doing. So, you know, you have your start. Uh, I don't know if we can say after effects. I cannot find after effects. Um, those are going to give me errors. Or maybe can we start notepad? Uh, we could even type that in here. And let's try and stack it. So we have start CMD, start notepad, run this. And in this case, it looks like it didn't work. Let's try and remove the first one. Or maybe we need to concatenate these. I believe the way you concatenate a command like this is by using ampersand, start notepad. And then we can just use that one line. Let's see if this would work practically here in an actual CMD. So yes, that would indeed launch both of them. What if we just try start notepad? Oh, my bad. We're getting errors because we just messed up this terminal on close function. So we'll redo that. Start command exe and start notepad and end with an end line relaunch the extension. We're going to get an output. We're going to get the notepad launched, all of our alerts, and we're going to get command.exe launched. So, and once we close it, of course, then we're going to get the closed. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to run command line or terminal arguments uh, through any Adobe app using your Adobe extension and the built-in node module child process. You can spawn CMD, you can spawn terminal, you can spawn SH files, you can spawn a whole bunch of different stuff. Check out the documentation. It's super helpful, providing uh, all this useful stuff you need, like the output of your command, if there's any errors, what happens when you close close the command or the process, as well as sending the physical uh, uh, lines of strings to your command line. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below and subscribe to get more videos just like this. In the upcoming months, we're going to be focusing more on grander subjects and less quick tips uh, just to see how that goes with everyone. But we're going to go ahead and close out this video and see you guys next time.